I've asked for this time for them, from the directors of Mid-South Wrestling to make a statement. And that statement is that the Rock and Roll Express are still the Mid-South Tag Team Champions. And every day, I've had to call my mother at home and tell her that once again, the Midnight Express have not regained the belts as of yet. And I think part of this is due to myself, to my loss of sight, to my loss of the fact that when we first came to Mid-South Wrestling, we made examples of people and we have lost our formula for success. But we're going back to basics. When we first came to Mid-South Wrestling, we broke one of the Bruce Brothers' leg to make an example out of him. We were the first to introduce the tar and feather suit to make an example out of Magnum TA, and we were also the first to bring a leather strap in the ring and whip a man to show him what a coward he was. The Rock and Roll Express need an example made out of them. And that is why that I'm serving notice here today. I am going to end the career of one of the Rock and Roll Express in the near future. But I won't say who and I won't say when. Well, as Bill Watts mentioned, that statement was very straightforward, directed just immediately to the Rock and Roll Express. Ladies and gentlemen, we're preparing to see the Rock and Roll Express in action. And now let's go to ring announcer, Boyd Pierce. This event, one fall or a 10 minute time limit, a tag team match. In the red corner, at 252 pounds from Montague County, Texas, Jake the Snake Roberts. His team partner, 268 pounds from New Jersey, Jack Victory. As we wait the appearance of the Rock and Roll Express. Wrestling here on Mid South. Carl Fergie will be the third man in the ring as we prepare for the sound of the bell. The referee calls for the bell. Bill, this Rock and Roll Express, perhaps the most charismatic, well, as great a working team as we've had here in ages. Well, Jim, without a doubt, they are the team that has captured the Mid South fans' hearts by storm. I've never seen a team that's so loved and so much backing. A formidable opponent in there, Jake the Snake Roberts. Six foot six, slimy, crawly, unscrupulous individual, Jack Victory. And of course, the threat hanging on their head is when will Jim Cornette strike? But I think the picture when the rock and roll came in, excitement that goes to the building. Awesome. Hey! He almost got Jake the Snake. There where you can see it is six foot six Jake the Snake, international known star. And many people underestimate the Rock and Roll Express, but you've got to remember that Goliath also underestimated David, and he went down to defeat. And a lot of bigger, stronger teams have been beaten by this extremely fast teamwork of this exciting team. Look at Ricky Morton, hang on for dear life in that side headlock. They make up for their lack of size and that tremendous quickness and their teamwork is as good as it can be. Is there any question as who the crowd's for as you hear the crowd chanting, go, go, go. Rock and roll, go, go. Jake the Snake, a seasoned veteran, was waiting for Ricky on that move. You can't go to the well once too often. Jack Victory in. Well, I'll tell you, Ricky Morton's got so much heart, so much fight. And he gives Jack Victory a taste of it. Moving into the corner to tag Robert. Robert over the top, his high flying style. Spinning toe hole. Another spinning toe hole, and Jack Victory is screaming for mercy. Jack Victory, a 268 pounder from New Jersey. Without a doubt, Steve, Dr. Death Williams, and Hercules Hernandez want those coveted belts as Hercules is Cornette's bodyguard, and Cornette figures he would have a lot of influence with that team. But the Midnight Express is still his primary team. So a lot of pressure on rock and roll. And of course, they've just come off that 90-day leave of absence. 
And they certainly, they said they've never been to an area that has been their favorite area, like Mid-South, that they love Mid-South area, and they're here to stay. Bill, I've always found it very interesting to find. Oh, what a kick right in the face of Jack Victory, Jim. Bottom of the foot, it was legal, but it was a vicious kick. It shows a new determination on the part of rock and roll and against a much bigger team, like you say. I don't think these guys fear anything that walks in tag team situations. They figure their quickness and the time they spent together perfecting their maneuvers and tactics that they can stay with anybody. Look at Jake the Snake viciously looking on. Right back to the leg and Gibson makes the tag. In comes Ricky Morton. Bill, I was about to say, they're keeping their opponent in their corner and using that great teamwork. And they're taking the bigger man off his feet. We know the equalizer there. Well, that's right, they can't stay on their feet with a guy like Dr. Death or Hercules for a long period of time. The size and strength and the leverage is gonna overcome them. But when you get them on that mat, it seems to neutralize the height and, and size advantage to some extent. Tag is made. You can almost hear him hiss. The snake is hissing. That football tackle, down goes the snake. Oh, what a maneuver. Snake is a vicious man, a vicious man. Ricky knows his partner's in trouble. The whole crowd, without a doubt, these kids are the heartthrob of Mid-South. Listen to this crowd, plead with them. Tag the tag. Jake the Snake took Ricky over the top rope when the referee was distracted. He would have automatically been a disqualification. Caught him, Robert Gibson. But the teamwork, Ricky Morton came back after him. And Robert Gibson, these kids can fight. They got the heart. Double drop kick. This place is a bedlam, Jim. Double back drop. These guys, when you put the two up together, they weigh 450 pounds like one man, and there they go, the Mid-South Champions of Rock and Roll Express. And we'll be back with more excitement with the big cat, Ernie Ladd, right after this word from the Mid-South Wrestling Television Network.